there is power in the name of Jesus. Woo! There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Let's say it together, there is power. Come on. We know what the power is. Shout, there is power. There is power. Break every chain, break every Somebody put your hands in the air right here, let's do it together. There's an army rising up. Come on, kingdom of God, shout, there's an army. There's an army rising up. And we won't keep silence, say there's an army. There's an army.
so you can be. I give myself away. What would happen if a generation embraced this? Come on, tell me. Here I am. Here I am.
Jesus Christ to me. To me, I was through. To me, I was as I say. Give me another sentence. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, give me head, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I
Thank God for another night 
of Passover. Look, I am so charged up for tonight's service. The God of heaven is with us. I am prepared for an encounter with God tonight. In spite of lockdown and COVID demon attack, the Bible says we are more than conquerors. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, we're talking about the Passover, the cross, especially our topic is entitled Victory by the Blood of His Cross. <laughs> this is a very powerful topic. We want to explore into it very well. And I believe that God is going to visit you, your family. After these seven days of Passover, your life shall never be the same again. Your life will change. Hallelujah. Now, why do we have to spend seven full days of Passover? Because we are, in, we are in the time of Easter. Easter means Passover, right? And Passover, or the Easter celebration, is rooted in the Old Testament. When Israel was in bondage in the land of Egypt, and God sent a deliverer by name Moses to go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And Pharaoh was so adamant. Me, 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 I will never let the people go. They will never go. And God said, let my firstborn go. If you never allow them to go, I'll kill your firstborns. And so it went on. It's a drama. Like a cat and a mouse story. You know. But the last plague that caused Israel to be free. That caused the heart of Pharaoh to be broken. The last card. If you are playing a card, right? If you are playing a card, your last card is very important. It's decisive. It's a defining moment. And God said, I will release the last card. And this one, he will let you go. Despite the miracles Moses performed, the rod becoming... Uh, a serpent to swallow the rods of the magicians, the turning of the, 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 the river Nile into, into blood, because the first miracle was that the Nile was turned into blood. And it continued, it continued, and the man said, I will never let them go. You see, demons never let their victims go free easily. Understand that. Satan does not allow is captives to be freed easily. Understand that. The devil doesn't easily release his captives. You see, Pharaoh represented Satan. Egypt represented the world. Israel represented the church. We call it types and, types and shadows. The Old Testament were types and then the real is right now, the New Testament. He said, I won't let them go. Never. Over my dead body. But then Exodus 11, verse 1 and verse 2. Exodus 11, verse 1 and 2. God said, I will release my last card. The trump card. As for this card, if I release it, he will let you go. In Exodus 11, Verse 1. I will read it shortly because we don't uh, have to gloss over this important uh, subject. Exodus 11, verse 1. Understand why we celebrate the Passover. It's so deep. It's so crucial. And the Lord said to Moses, I will bring one more plague. Come on, say one more plague. One more plague. <laughs> Shout, one more plague. one more plague. That's what God told Moses. One more plague. God will do one more thing for you today. Amen. Several things may have happened in your life. No matter the blessings you have brought, boom, some summary or see, one more plague. God will do one more plague. Anything harassing your life for the past years, one more plague. Satan doesn't release his captives easily, but God is Jehovah. 
He said, I will bring one more plague on Pharaoh and on Egypt. And afterward, he will let you go from here. Hallelujah. Anybody in the kind of bondage, anybody in the kind of captivity, God says, I will release the last card. The last plague. Amen. And he will free you. Amen. But why are you free? You will be free. Amen. He will surely drive you out of, he, of here altogether. And God speak now in the hearing of the people. And let every man ask from his neighbor and every woman from her neighbor articles of silver and gold. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Now, I'll treat this one maybe tomorrow or the next day. But the point for today is that God said, I will bring one more plague. I'll do one more powerful thing. And this one, <laughs> he can never say no. He can never stop you from leaving the bondage of Egypt, the bondage of the world, the bondage of Satan, Lucifer, devil, Satan, the old great serpent, the red serpent. He can never stop you from going. This one more thing, this one more plague is so powerful that he will release you. He will, he will, he will drive you away by force. He will tell you, I'm tired of you. I'm tired of you. Please leave my life, leave my land, leave my people and go your way right and be free. One more thing. One more thing. Now, the thing we, we study about is the Passover. And this happened in chapter 12, verse 11 of Exodus. And I'll come back. 12, 11. It says that, and, and thus you shall eat it with a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. God told the Israelites to kill one lamb. Every family, one lamb. Kill the lamb, smear the blood on your lentils, on your doors. So that you shall eat it in haste. It is a lost Passover. Now, Passover, the Lord shall pass over. God shall spare. The word is Pascha. Pascha. Hebrew means Pascha. And Pascha means spare. It means that even though people shall die, the firstborn shall die in every house, God shall spare. Amen. Now, verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night. And I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. And I like that. All the gods, Egypt, all the demons in Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am Jehovah. Hallelujah. When God speaks like this, God says, I am. I will do this. I am. That means that, look, nobody can fight me. You can never uh, advise me. You can never instruct me. I am God. Yeah. Full stop. Amen. I will do this. I will do that. I am God. Amen. I am Jehovah. Amen. The self-existent one. Yes. I was and I am and I shall ever be. Because I'm clap of free. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Then one more thing. And then in verse 12, verse 13. Verse 12. Verse 13 says that, Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. I'll spare you. That means that by the blood you'll be exempted. The blood shall exempt you from being attacked. And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Listen, plague is like COVID-19. It's a plague. That is devastating people, destroying lives. Yeah. Yeah. Place I've been there several, maybe tomorrow when I come, I'll give you the history of place in the world. I'll just give you the history of place. How place, the, the, the Spanish uh, flu, the, uh, uh, whatever it is, this place have devastated the whole world. Tomorrow I'll come with, I'll come with that history. Okay? But a plague is a deadly infectious disease that ends people dead. Right. And the place shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Now, that was the last card. When God did that, the story changed. 
I mean, the whole ball game, the whole ball game changed. It is like a class of folk playing as I think Kotoko. Right? Okay. And Kotoko has been scoring and scoring and scoring. One, two, three. Charlie, if you are a Kotoko, a Kotoko fan, just take it cool. I'm not fighting with you. <laughs> I used to be an a class of full fan. But I stopped because in the time they scored, as I couldn't eat. Hey. It looks like I, I, I lost I lost appetite completely. And it was affecting my spiritual life. I couldn't pray because Hass had lost years ago. You remember the fearsome fivesome? Uh, Peter Lamte, and then those, those five powerful people who could score goals. Powerful one. Powerful score, uh, scorers. Amen. Yeah, they were called the fearsome fivesome. There were five of them. I forgot their names. Peter Lamte was one of them. He was called a, a goal thief. But each time across the folk was scored, I couldn't eat. And I discovered that, hey, soccer can let me lose my spiritual life. So I, I just had to save my life on soccer. So now, then at one point, I said, okay, now let me belong to across the folk in Kotoko at the same time. So I called myself Has, 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 and Kotoko fan. So I, I supported them. But I stopped. But look at this scenario. Kotoko may be scoring Has, one, two, three. Then Peter Lamte is introduced to change the I mean ch game changer, game changer. One particular player, number seven, that guy, Peter Lamte. He would dribble and then add just one, two, three, and then change the whole game. And then can you imagine the scenario? Has four Kotoko three. Yeah, uh, 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 Kotoko four, don't fight me. I mean, I'm just preaching the scenario. God released one special person. One special plague to change the game. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Pharaoh was winning. He was winning. I don't let them go. Let them go. They don't go. Let them go. They don't go. Let them go. Amunko, 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 amunko. Yeah, why? Yeah, it was like like that. And then one single, one single person that was released changed the whole ball game. It changed. The, it was a game changer. What was it? The pass. Over the pass over the pass over the pass over it changed the whole ball game, it changed the game. Now, the pass over is nothing than the cross, is a cross, is the blood of the cross. The blood was what made the difference between the 10 miracles, the nine miracles, and the last one that was performed. I tell you, there's power in the cross. There's power in the cross. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So Moses had to embrace the revelation. Introduce it to the people. And when they did it, Pharaoh said, now go. Because one day he woke up one, one, one morning. And people were crying. Every house. Nyeh, nyeh, amen, amen, amen. People were crying everywhere. What is happening? Our firstborns are dead. They are dead. Let them go. And Pharaoh's firstborn to die. And he felt the pinch. He said, now, if I don't let you guys go, we all die. Now go. The last card. Say the last card. 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 It was the blood that was shed. The, the lamp that was killed. So, the Passover, Christianity, he's hinging on the cross. Without the cross, we are like any other religions in the world. The cross is what holds us. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. That is the cross. For it's the power of God to salvation. The cross. If we negate the cross, we are finished. Amen. amen. Come on, say a big amen now. Amen. The cross is a mystery. And I'll show you the few minutes. The cross of Jesus, the last card that broke the camel's back. To release is that was a big mystery. Now, mysteries are important in God's kingdom. If you cannot understand mysteries and plug yourself into them, you won't make it in life. Mysteries are miracles. I mean, things you can't really use your mind to actually understand. Mark 4 11. Mark it. Mark 4 11. You can write it down. Jesus Christ said, and he said to them. To you, it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. God's kingdom is a kingdom of mysteries. Mysteries. 
But to those who are outside, all things come in parables. So, the outsiders will understand our religion. They will understand our Christianity because to them, it's, it's parable. But to us who are believers, it's a mystery. It's a mystery. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, even our faith is a mystery. Believing God is a mystery. First Timothy 3 verse 9. First Timothy 3 verse 9 says that holding the mystery of the faith Holding the mystery of the faith with a pure conscience. The faith of the Christian is a mystery. Say, so you are believing God for healing. It's a mystery. You are believing God that where you are will change. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. You are believing God that your future will be bright. It's a mystery. You can't fathom. Why didn't say, It's a mystery. It's a mystery. So if we don't block and flow with the mysteries, okay, the supernatural, we won't go far in Christianity. It will become a philosophy. Obi Akebi, Obi Akebi, can I mean count democracy? Christianity is not democracy. <laughs> it's a supernatural thing. It's a mystery. Amen. Amen. And Moses engaged the mystery of faith. Hebrews 11 verse 26 coming. See Moses. Moses engaged the mystery of the faith because faith itself is a mystery. Hallelujah. Amen. Hebrews 11 from verse 26 coming down. Let me read. From verse, from verse 24. By faith, Moses, it's a mystery, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt that was Moses he was, he was like a prince but he saw something strange about God he saw something strange he, he valued the reproaches of suffering than the treasures of becoming a prince in Egypt for I look for a reward. Verse 27. By faith, he forsook Egypt. Listen, oh, Moses by faith forsook Egypt. No fear the wrath of the king. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Christianity is invisible. It's a life. It's not a religion. It's a special life and you block it by faith. Moses, all those times he was in the king's palace, he was believing God for something. Because faith is a mystery. Now, verse 28 is the point. 28. By faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood. Hallelujah. Amen. So we see by faith, Moses did that. By faith, by faith, everything, every step he took, it was by faith. By faith, he kept the Passover, okay? And the sprinkling of blood. Lest he who destroyed the, the firstborn should touch them. You see? So, Faith is a mystery. Now, you have to understand that the path that we take must be taken by faith. I'm saying that you can be healed by the blood. Amen. You can be delivered by the blood. Amen. Whatever is ailing your life, at the cry, I hope you be free. Amen. Yeah. It's a mystery. Faith is what? A mystery. So if you believe God right now, that sickness shall be healed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When I see the blood, I will pass over. And he believed that. So they had to sprinkle the blood on their doorpost. It's called blood of sprinkling. Blood of sprinkling. Moses took every step by faith. So we are dealing with a kind of mystery. God's kingdom is a dealer of mysteries. Can I repeat myself? Yeah. God's kingdom is what is a dealer of what we deal with. We deal in mysteries. There are people who sell burning wow. What do you call them? Or burning wow dealers. Those some sell a time. We saw them tie dealers. God's kingdom is called what? Kingdom uh, uh, mysteries dealers. We deal with mysteries, and faith is a mystery. Hallelujah. Amen. God is a mystery. Amen. God is what a mystery. You can believe God for a miracle right now. 
as you say the communion, whatever, if, it's, if you are suffering from COVID, if you have been declared to have the infection, it will die in Jesus' name. Amen. Right now, you start sweating right now. You start, you'll be free right now if you believe God with me right now. First Timothy 3, verse 16. First Timothy 3, 16. It says that, and with that controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. So, godliness, our worship, our praise, our singing, our dancing, is all rooted in the mystery. Yes, Say yes, sir. We are dancing for miracles. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are dancing your way to a breakthrough. Everything we do, like right now, it's a mystery. It's a mystery. I'm preaching God's word. It's a mystery. And as you receive God's word, the mystery of godliness, where there's healing, there's power, demonstration, you shall be free right now. It's a mystery. Christianity is not, it's not just a religion. It is a mystery that contains miraculous encounters. Hallelujah. Now, one of the mysteries of Christianity is the cross. It's the cross. Paul, God said, I will lift my last card. Now, why should that last card? That's why the miracles God performed. The last card was important. That is equal to what Jesus Christ came to do. He came, he preached the gospel, healed the sick, raised the dead, fed the 5,000, 4,000, these several miracles, but God said, go to the cross. That's part of the miracles Jesus did. <laughs> he cast demons out. He said, no, it's all fine, but the cross, you must go to the cross. The cross is your last card. It's your last trump card. The cross. Now, First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6 coming down. First Corinthians 2, verse 6. And saying that the cross is a mystery. The cross. The blood which I kept tonight is a mystery. Let me read. However, we speak the wisdom among those who are mature. Yet not the wisdom of this age. Nor the rulers of this age. Who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in the mystery. In the, the, in the mystery. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. So this wisdom... We are preaching about this mystery was introduced to us long before we were born. Let's come back to basics again. The cross, the blood of the cross was introduced before we were born. It's a mystery. It was hidden. The last time I told you that the blood was shed long before Adam was created. Yeah. Yeah. You remember? Yeah. yeah. The book of Revelation 12 verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of your testimony, who overcame him? The angels. The angels who fought against Satan and his angels. Amen. Amen. He fought against the, the, oh, the great dragon, the old serpent called the devil. He's called the deceiver. Amen. Amen. They had to conjure or invoke the blood of Jesus Christ to overcome. In the contest, in the contest, if you read the contest. The whole contest that there was war in heaven. And the angels fought. Michael, Michael and the angels fought. The devil and the angels fought. And all they could do was to use the blood to overcome the devil. So the blood was an intervention <laughs> for us. So the blood was shed before Christ came. The book of Revelation 13, verse 8. The book of what? Revelation 13, verse 8. It says that what? The blood, the Lamb of God was slain before what? The foundations of the earth, of the world. The Lamb of God was slain wow. before the foundation. So Jesus Christ died twice. Wow. He died spiritually before he died physically. Amen. He shed the blood before he shed the blood. Every spiritual thing must manifest physically. So there was a hidden wisdom from God for humanity. God knew that the devil would deceive him, but he knew. So God made a beautiful plan of redemption. <laughs> God made a, I mean, the plan was laid before Adam was created. God, I mean, God is God. He knew that when the devil sinned against God, God knew the devil would be a, a problem, a troubler. So God laid a plan of redemption for man. So that was that there was a hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. Now, verse 8, which none of the rulers of this age knew. 
For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Now, so it's about crucifixion, the cross. If they had known the glory you and I would receive, demons wouldn't have dared to destroy Christ. It was hidden from Satan. He was, it was hidden. The powers of darkness never knew that you and I will be saved. It was called the hidden wisdom of God. So the wisdom of God is enshrined on the cross. The cross is God's wisdom. It's a mystery. It's a hidden mystery. The greatest wisdom of God is the cross. Please understand that. There's no wisdom above the cross. That's why we must preach the cross. Amen. It's the greatest wisdom of God. The cross is the greatest wisdom of God for the world. It's a hidden wisdom. Verse 9. As it's written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love, love him. If you love God, there are things for you. And they will come by the power of the cross. Yeah. The cross can give you anything you need. Now, first, I'm, I'm Colossians 1 verse Verse um, First Corinthians seven one verse seventeen. I read First Corinthians one seventeen to verse eighteen. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. So we don't use wisdom to preach the gospel. Human wisdom. It doesn't make sense, right, to preach the cross. But the cross is God's wisdom. The highest wisdom of God for humanity is the cross. Praise God. Hallelujah. Say amen now. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. So Paul said, For God did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with the word, wisdom of words, huh? trying to polish possible words, trying to <laughs> use words lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. So if we try to manipulate the cross, try to present it in the way the effect will be lost. Raw cross. Raw gospel. Amen. Amen. For the message of the cross listen to, is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved is the power of God. Have you seen that? So the cross we preach is what? The power of God. It's a hidden wisdom. Amen. Amen. So the effects, there are effects. Say effects. Come on, say the effects. Say effects. Say effects. The effects of the cross can be made available to us. It can affect you. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'll give you only one of them tonight. And then we pray. Maybe two. I mean, just two of them. And then we pray. The first one is that the cross will give you secure peace. It will secure your peace with God. The first one is that the cross is a place of peace. It secures our peace with God. Ephesians 2 verse 14. Ephesians 2 verse 14 says that for he himself is our peace. Hallelujah. Who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. Verse 15. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances so as to create in himself one new man from the two thus making Peace, verse 16, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. Hallelujah. So the cross is the place where we are reconciled to God. It's a place of peace. Amen. If tonight you are hearing me, receive the peace of God. Amen. Is that said that in the world you shall have tribulation. That COVID is a demon troubling. You shall have problems, but in me, you shall have peace. Cheer up because I have overcome the world. Receive the peace of God. Amen. It's a place where God reconciles sinners to God. On the cross, his hands were crucified. Left and right, his head was up, his legs were down. It means 
the north and the south and the east and the west were all being brought together in one body. The Akan, the Fanti, the Ever, the Dagbani, the Chinese, the American, all brought into one body, making peace. Receive the peace of God. The last one I will share with you, and then we we'll take communion, is that on the cross, he took our sicknesses yeah. and our diseases. Mm -hmm. First Peter 2, verse 24. First Peter 2, 24. And I read the last scripture. Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree. He bore what? Our sins. On his own body. On the tree, on the cross. That we being dead to sins might live for righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Now, when they were laying stripes on Christ, ye bunu, ye shinu, ye bunu, there were sores on his body. I mean, sores on his body. At his back, they whipped him. They, they, they whipped, whipped him with stripes. Amen. 49 stripes plus one. Amen. 50 stripes. He lost, lost all, the, all the blood in his body. And they put the, the, the cross on the sore body. He carried the same cross. He was beaten, you know, and his body was full of sores. And he carried the, carried the cross on him to be crucified. Now, Bible says, by his stripes, you were healed. The cancer you have was crucified on the cross. The sickness you have was what? Crucified on the cross. The COVID, coronavirus, was what? Crucified on the cross. So tonight, we are invoking the power of the cross against every sickness, against every sin, against every disease. It all happened on the cross. The cross is the place of healing, of salvation, a place of peace. This season of Easter, people have forgotten because of the lockdown. But we shall celebrate Easter in this grand style by taking the communion. Now, as we get ready to take the communion, Make your communion ready. We shall pray right now. We shall pray right now. As we, as we take the communion, we, 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 we reactivate the blessings in the Passover. Okay? The Passover communion we take is rooted in the Old Testament. And Christ repeated it. And said, do this in remembrance of me. We take it to remember Christ as our Savior who died for us. Took our pain, our sickness. Amen. On the cross, Bible says that he took our pain, our sickness on him. Hallelujah. So we're going to take it right now. But before we take it, close your eyes. If you are, on, if you are with me and you do, are not born again, the cross is the place of peace for you. God shall give you peace right now. His peace shall come into your life right now. Then we continue from there. Close your eyes right now. If you want Jesus to come into your life, you want to get born again, you want the cross. To come into your life. You want to be part of the body of Christ. You want to say, Lord, tonight I surrender my life. The cross is the last, is the last thing that God did for Israel. The cross was the last thing. The Passover was the last thing God did for Israel to set them free. The cross is the last place of surrender. If you have been going up and down for years. Today, the cross is the last place for surrender. Hallelujah. You want Jesus in your life? Raise the right hand to God in your room and say, Lord Jesus, I believe in the cross that you died for me. On the third day, you rose again. Today, I confess you as my Lord and my personal Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross. Now, we're going to take a communion right now. Make your, yourself ready. This is my communion. This is my, the body. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, what we do is that the bread represents the body of Jesus. When we pray on the bread, it's no more bread. Spiritually, it becomes the body of Jesus. Amen. And there's healing the body of Jesus Christ. There's a scripture I'll read shortly 
and then we we, 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 we we take it from there John chapter 6 John 6 so hold your breath right now and I'm coming through with you right now John chapter 6 verse 53 then Jesus said to them most assuredly I say to you unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood you have no life in you so the, the, the body of Christ this life Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. So, any kind of nutrients you need is in the body. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. Ah, hallelujah. Now, if you take the body of Jesus, you shall live Amen. and not die. Amen. If you are infected by coronavirus, you shall live Amen. and not die. Amen. I'm speaking to somebody right now. Wherever you are, if you have been infected with corona in the U.S., in Italy, anywhere you are, if you take a communion right now, if you do it by faith, you shall live and not die. Believe God. It's a mystery. I say it's a mystery. If you believe, it shall happen to you according to your faith. Be it unto you. Amen. Amen. Now when you take the, the communion, the Lord shall be a blessing to you. Lift your body up. And say, Lord Jesus, in the night, you were betrayed. You took bread and gave thanks and broke it and said, take it this is my body broken for you do this in remembrance of me as i remember you i reactivate the blessings of the passover i reactivate the healing on your body i reactivate the blessings on your body in the name of jesus christ i thank you lord amen take it right now Thank you, Lord. Oh, the blood. Come on now. Let's sing the song, the blood. I love the blood. I love the blood. It's time for the blood. If I see the blood, I'll pass over you. Now, God doesn't need blood. God doesn't eat blood. God is a spirit. But the blood is for our good. The blood is for our good. Believe God for a miracle. Barrenness will be broken right now. Every satanic threat shall cease. Every demon that is contaminated or shall terminate every satanic threat in your life. From day to day, it will never lose its power. Come on, sing with me right now. Oh, Jesus. Ah, yes. Now, see, believe God this night. The blood can flow anywhere. It flows everywhere tonight. Receive the blood. Makuriam pass to Kappa. The blood. It gives me strength from day to day. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. You see us tonight. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Hallelujah. We shall sing it later. Man, now lift the cup by faith. Lift it up. Close your eyes. Be serious. The faith, the diligent faith is what is rewarded. Not any faith. Serious faith. I told you earlier on that Moses partook the pastor by faith and the faith generated the results he had. So if you believe God right now, something will happen. The Lord shall rejuvenate your body. He shall heal and restore your body. He shall protect your life. Now say, Lord, 
in the same manner you took the cup and said this is my blood of the New Testament shed for you for the forgiveness of sins drink it all of you as often as you drink my blood you show my debt till I come Lord your blood your blood of the cross was the last thing you did for our salvation our healing our redemption Lord as I partake your blood tonight let your healing flow but let your life flow through me. Every sickness in my body be healed. Even if I have the wrong blood group, temper with that. Temper with that. In the blood group, the devil has tempered with to cause me pain. Tonight, change my blood group by your blood and heal me in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's drink it right now. Thank you, Lord. Sprinkle on your body. Thank you, Lord. It's, a, it's called sprinkling blood. Thank you, Lord. I give you glory. Thank you, Lord. Let's sing this song shortly. Thank you for the cross. I will thank God and end up right now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's sing this song and bless the Lord with this song. Thank you for the cross. It's a song we sing. We say, Lord, we thank you. When you thank him, you, you activate the blessings. Thanksgiving waters the prayer, waters the blood, waters the body. Thanksgiving opens the place for the miracle. Thank you so much. Let's sing out. Thank you for the price. You pay, bearing all my sin and shame. In love, you pay. Yes, Lord, I give you praise. Amazing Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this love. Nothing can separate us from your love. Thank you. Thank you for the name. God is some clap offering. Wherever you are clapping. Uh, I can't see you, but God can see you. Look at me. Look at me. Point your finger to me. I say, I can't see you physically, but God can see you wherever you are. God can see. So give God some clap offering. Clap for him. He, he, knows, he knows you. He knows your name. Amen. Hallelujah. In Jesus' precious name. Now, say after me, by the blood of Jesus Christ, I am healed. By the power of the cross, I am free. I have peace with God. I'm enjoying peace in my life. Every turbulence, every demon of COVID shall never come near my dwelling place. 
I am, I am, I am, I am freed by the blood of Jesus and the life of God in me. I'm protected by the blood of Jesus. Amen. We're going to sing a very powerful song and boogie and boogie a little. Any nice, any nice song. Don't worry, any nice song you can have for me. And then, but if you have an offering for God, look at the um, look look on the screen, okay? And if you are led to give, just give to God, not under compulsion, but as a cheerful giver. Bible says that. Um, Give shall be given to you, good measure, pressed down, and shaking together and running over shall men give into your bosom. So, don't close yet. Look at the number 0591 0591 and give to the Lord. Our members who are in the church, they understand what I mean. If you are just somebody's watching uh, and enjoying. We are not forcing you to give anything, right? But our members who are locked down. Now, we can't have chests, so our members understand what we do here. We don't appeal for funds, no. But we give as a Christian obligation. We give to God to enhance God's work. Hallelujah. So don't just close and go. Look at it and momo anything you have for God and the Lord shall bless you. Let me tell you, we are coming back stronger and stronger and stronger as a church. In Jesus' name. Now I'm praying for the world. Let's pray for the world right now. May God visit the world. All those who are sick of the COVID, say, Lord, we release your blood about them. We pray for the world, Lord. Visit the world. We command the COVID 19 to go in Jesus' name. We cast it out in Jesus' name. And we release your healing power to heal the nations. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, I will share the grace with you right now. When I f share the grace with you, we, shall, we won't close yet, right? We'll close around 5 past or 10 past 8. But we're going to dance in our room. Get up and dance. Get up and dance. Get me a very powerful song, a dancing, whatever song you have, they just take it. Let's dance and bless God and give Him glory. And give him praise. Amen. I will raise a song that we shall dance and praise the Lord. Amen. Little hands up to the Lord. You can take your offering. Give me my give me my 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 my, my, my um take your take your, your phone. My take your phone. Let's pray on your phone right now. Take your phone. Take your don't hang. I see some hanging. I mean, you have to be a giver, a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. My phone is right there. Take it for me. Let's give to the Lord shortly. Before we all hang Jesus' name, take it. Say, Lord Jesus, I sow my seed into your kingdom. I believe I'm reaping good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. I receive my blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's praise the Lord right now. Let's share the grace right now. The grace of Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be this now and forevermore. Amen. Let's let's do some boogie. Are we ready? Let's boogie. Let's boogie. Let's boogie. Power Amen. Power to save. Power to save. There is only one name. I want to hear you sing tonight. Unto Jesus. Come on. Let me say this. There is only one name. There is only one name. Every knee, 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 every knee,